the uh, uh, PowerPoint apparently isn't working, so we're going to go low tech this morning. And there's something uh, comforting and nostalgic about the feel of the uh, flannel graph. Uh, and uh, for our uh, last, last few weeks, we've been going back to Sunday school, uh, looking at the Sunday school events in the life of Christ that you and I know so well, uh, and going really back to the basics. Uh, Jesus doing stuff like defeating Satan in the wilderness, the wilderness uh, temptation. Uh, Jesus calling the disciples. Uh, Jesus having his feet washed by the woman and extending forgiveness and grace to us. Uh, back to those refreshing stories of Jesus Christ. And throughout the rest of the summer, we're going to be seeing many more of these encounters of Jesus uh, with uh, believers, with unbelievers, uh, the stories of Jesus and the teachings of Jesus. And the greatest story of all will be coming uh, at the end, I assume, Mark, the resurrection of Jesus. And the reason that we're spending so much time this summer, the reason that the gospel writers wrote all these accounts of the, the, the miracles of Jesus and the teachings of Jesus so, as, so that we would see how awesome Jesus is, and as a result, we would believe. This is what John, uh, the disciple that Jesus loved, uh, the one who walked with Jesus, watched Jesus die on the cross, saw the resurrected Jesus, and then recorded the life of Jesus for us, told us was the whole point of everything he was writing is so that we might believe, so that we would see Jesus and put our full trust and confidence in him that we would have a very specific belief that's based on the understanding of who Jesus is and what he would do, and that very specific belief in a specific person would have a specific impact in our life. And if you guys know the rest of this verse, uh, it's not just that we would believe, that we, but that we would believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and in believing, we would have life in his name, uh, that we would have a belief, not just a general belief, but a belief that counts. And that's what we're going to be looking at this morning, is belief that counts, and we're going to be learning about this belief that counts straight from the lips of Jesus Christ himself. And we're going to be looking in John chapter 16, and in John chapter 16, Jesus commends his disciples for their belief, their belief that counts. And we're going to learn about this belief from Jesus. Inside your bulletin, you have an outline. Also in your Bibles, you have John chapter 16. So if you'd like to turn there with me now, um, I'd love it. Let's read the words of Jesus about this belief that counts and see what we can learn from Jesus as he encourages the disciples. Now this picks up right in the middle of the teachings of Jesus the night before he was arrested. But I want to pick up right here uh, at this uh, breaking point in verse 27. Jesus says this, the Father himself loves you. He's speaking to his disciples uh, in the upper room. He says, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and you have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world and now I am leaving the world and going to the Father. The disciples said, ah, now you're speaking plainly and not using figurative speech. And now we know that you know all things and do not need anyone to question you. This is why we believe that you came from God. Now this encouragement from Jesus and this affirmation of the belief of the disciples helps us to understand a little bit about this belief that counts. And the first thing that we learn about this belief that counts, and this is the first blanks on your outline, is that the belief that counts reconciles us to God. And that's what he says about the belief of the disciples. He says, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and you have believed. Uh, their love for Christ, which was accompanied by their belief in Christ, their belief that counts, resulted in their relationship with God being fixed. What was the result of their belief? The Father himself what? 
The Father himself loves the disciples. It wasn't just Jesus that loved his disciples, but because of their belief, their belief that counts, uh, the Father himself loves the disciples. This is is the same with us. The belief that counts hasn't changed. Uh, This is a belief that fixes our relationship with God. When we have this belief that counts, we move from a position of hostility with God into a position where we're actually beloved children of God. Way earlier in the book of John, uh, John told us this, that whoever believes have, has eternal life. Whoever does not shall see, not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. This is the other side of that belief that counts. We who have the belief that counts, the Father loves us. If you don't have the belief that counts, the wrath of God remains on on us. That we who have the belief that counts are loved by the Father now and receive eternal life from the Father that goes into eternity. So there's a lot on the line with this belief that counts. There's lots of beliefs that don't count when it comes to making our relationship with, right with God. There is one belief that actually counts that brings us into the love of the Father, removes us from underneath the wrath of God, and gives us eternal life. This is, this is the belief that we're, we're looking at this morning, this belief that reconciles us with God. And as we're understanding more about this belief, be looking at ourselves as we go and asking the question, first, do I have this belief that counts? Do I have this belief, this faith that fixes my relationship with God. And since I do, how can I then extend the opportunity for other people to believe in Christ in this way, to to share this belief that counts with others? So keep those two things in mind, and we'll circle back to them as we go. So belief that counts reconciles us to God, but believe in what? Now, Jesus gives us a little bit of clue in chapter 16 there, and I circled the clues on the screen. Anybody want to take a guess at what Jesus is saying to believe in? Him. This whole section about belief that counts is about Jesus. And you may have noticed that I had... uh, deleted some things from the John 3 passage. The real passage says, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. So this belief that counts, the only belief that counts, centers on Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now before we look at the details of what Jesus says about the belief that counts in this John 16 passage, um, I want to uh, reflect on our, uh, our trip to Louisiana um, that we took uh, a month or two ago. And if you ask me, okay, w- tell me about your trip. And I told you, we left Seattle, went to San Antonio, went to Monroe, went to Dallas, and back to Seattle. That, that would be a true description of our trip, but uh, to really understand what was going on, you'd have to read between the lines. What you would understand with us going from Seattle to San Antonio is that our family is separated from most of my dad's family who live in Texas, and that uh, I have a grandma, or had uh, a grandma in Texas that uh, we wanted to go see as a family. Uh, So we went to San Antonio, and then we had to drive to the wedding that we were going to in Monroe, uh, Louisiana. And after the amazing wedding, we needed to head home quickly, so we flew out of Dallas back to Seattle. Uh, And and if you read between the lines in the itinerary, you actually can learn a little bit about me, uh, who I am, and what we experienced on that trip. And as Jesus is presenting the, this belief that counts, it's almost like Jesus is saying, the Father loves you because you believe in my travel itinerary. He says, uh, you believe that I came from God, I came from the Father, came into the world, now I'm leaving the world and going to the Father. That's who you believe. Uh, it's kind of like Jesus is saying, you believe in my itinerary, but with Jesus' description of his movements uh, from the Father to the world, 
out of the world, we have to read between the lines, uh, and what we actually learn from Jesus' itinerary is a lot about his identity and also about his work. Embedded in that itinerary is who Jesus is and what Jesus came to and successfully accomplished. So as we, as we look at it, let's look at Jesus' first move is in his itinerary. Uh, and this is all about the identity of Christ. He tells them, you have believed that I came from God. I have come from the Father. Now that tells us something very important and unique about Jesus and Jesus' identity. Because all of us, before we came into the world, uh, we came from our mother's womb. And before we were in our mother's womb, we were nowhere. Uh, We did not exist. Now, when Jesus came into the world, he doesn't say, I came from my mother's womb into the world, now I am here. He says, I came from where? I came from the Father. uh, And I'm going back to the Father. Uh, Before Jesus was in the world, before Jesus was born in a barn, before Jesus was miraculously conceived by an act of supernatural uh, creation, uh, Jesus existed. Jesus was with the Father, and he explains to his disciples, this is what you believe about me. Uh, that I didn't just come into I didn't just come into this world like any other man. I existed before I came into this world. I came from the Father. This is what John tried to help us understand before he began his biography of Jesus Christ was the identity, the unique identity of Jesus as the Son of God. And he told us that in the beginning was the Word, here a reference to Jesus, and the Word was with God and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God and all things were made through him. Uh, quite a backstory to the man Jesus Christ. And then the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. This is Jesus Christ. This is the the identity of Jesus that the disciples have understood and believed that he had come from God. He had come from the father. This is the identity of Jesus Christ that the, the, uh, the enemies of Christ refuse to believe. Uh, And Jesus lays down his eternality, his deity, his existence before his life on earth with the Father and the Holy Spirit uh, as uh, a necessary belief for uh, entering the kingdom of heaven, as a necessary belief for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Uh, Arguing with his critics, Jesus said to the Pharisees, you are from below, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. I told you uh, that you would die in your sins, for unless you believe that I am, you will die in your sins. Uh, He said, unless you believe that I came from the Father, unless you believe that I am from above, unless you believe that I am not of this world, uh, your belief does not count. You will not be reconciled to the Father, uh, and as a result, you will die in your sins. So this is the second thing that we learn from Jesus' itinerary, that belief that counts begins with Jesus' identity as God the Son. Belief that counts begins with Jesus' identity as God the Son. And you see that all over the book of John, don't we? Uh, that God so loved the world that he sent his only son, uh, Jesus, the son of God. He alone is the focus of belief that counts, and his understanding, his identity as God himself, eternally existent, come to earth, is uh, 100% essential for having a belief that actually counts. As we think about the, this first part of the belief that counts, believing in Jesus' identity as the Son of God, um, do you have this belief for yourself? Do you, have you understood that Jesus is God come in the flesh. Not that he, he was, Jesus wasn't just some man that had some good religious ideas. Jesus wasn't just a uh, fairy tale or a religious myth. 
Uh, Jesus is actually the creator God come to earth. And if you have embraced this belief in Jesus' identity as the Son of God, how then can you help others to grasp the weight of who Jesus was? How can you help unbelievers to, to grasp the weight of who Jesus was? Uh, how can you point others to his identity as God the Son? And I want to offer uh, two little ideas, and they're a little bit unorthodox. One is when we pray, to pray to Jesus and to pray to Jesus out loud. We're not, we're not just praying, God bless the food, we're pray, praying to Jesus out loud. And you might not get a, an opportunity to uh, witness to some of your friends. They might not have an opportunity to come and hear you sing worship songs to some of your friends, but you may get an opportunity to pray. Uh, you might be the, the one weird Christian in the room that they ask, well, can you, can you pray before our, uh, our meal? Um, uh, you may be in a restaurant and get a chance to pray and people are listening. Uh, you may get a chance to pray in front of believers, believer, but then when you do it, pray overtly to Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Make Jesus an issue every opportunity that you can. And, and, and another way that we can um, uh, 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 put the worth and uh, identity of Jesus as God out on the table for unbelievers to, uh, to see is by demanding reverence for Jesus. Demanding reverence for Jesus even from unbelievers. And uh, this might, might be a little bit uh, pushy and confrontational, but hey, why not be pushy and confrontational every once in a while? And I like the way uh, Ray Comfort does it. Uh, and he, he, he asks uh, when uh, he, uh, someone is using God's, Jesus' name in vain, he asks, do you like your mom? Listen. That's sort of a confrontational question. Do you love your mother? Would you use her name as a curse word? You're using, using God, the God of the universe's name for a curse word. That's dangerous territory you're treading in. Um, why, not, why not be a little bit confrontational and put the worth of King Jesus right there on the table? Uh, stand up for Jesus. Get a little agitated because of the, the reputation of Jesus and the honor of Jesus is being uh, being uh, blasphemed. Uh, that's what Ray Comfort says. Hey, uh, this is that, the Bible calls that blasphemy. Let's honor King Jesus. Let's honor him uh, as the Son of God. Because this is where belief that, uh, that counts begins. That's where it is going to begin with us, honoring Jesus as the Son of God. And if any of those people around you that don't know Christ is actually going to have belief that counts, they're going to have to uh, bow the knee to King Jesus as well and give him the respect uh, that he deserves as well. So at belief that counts, it reconciles us to God, and it begins with Jesus' identity as the Son of God. Now, Jesus' second movement in his itinerary that he describes uh, focuses in on Christ's work. He says, I came from the Father, uh, that it speaks of his identity, but then he says, I have come into the world, and I'm now leaving the world. Jesus summarizes 33 years in these two phrases. I've come into the world, and now I'm leaving the world. He summarizes from Christmas to Easter uh, in these two phrases. And uh, Jesus' mission in the world uh, is the focus of his coming. When uh, we've traveled a lot internationally, and this is usually uh, going to immigration is one of the most tense moments for me. Uh, and it uh, doesn't matter what country you're in, they always ask the same question. And they might not even say hello to you. Uh, they might not even look you in the eyes, but they always ask the same question of why are you coming? Uh, what is the purpose for your visit? And Jesus has just informed us that uh, believing that he came into the world uh, results in the love of the Father. But why, why, why would he... How would he answer the question, what is the purpose of your visit, Jesus? What would you say? To, to save the world. Hey, he was coming on a rescue mission. That, that is why Jesus came into the world. Uh, that is uh, that mission of 
rescuing, seeking and saving the lost and rescuing sinners uh, is the mission that Jesus uh, accomplished in the world. And when Jesus says, I have come into the world, uh, he, he's presenting his mission. And when he says, I'm leaving the world, that means his mission has been completed. Uh, Jesus' mission to seek and save the lost. And Jesus was uh, not shy about explaining why he had come into the world and what it is that the disciples would need to believe in uh, his mission of saving sinners. Uh, He said in Luke 19, the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Matthew, the Son of Man came not to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Uh, This is uh, the the essential feature of belief that counts is not just in who Jesus was, but also in what Jesus did, why he came into the world. What was Jesus' mission that he accomplished? And that was saving sinners. So a, a third aspect of belief that counts is a belief that counts trust only in Jesus's saving work. The mission that he came to do, the mission that he successfully accomplished on the cross, dying, giving his life as a ransom for you and me. Taking the punishment for the bad things that I've done, the bad things that you've done on the cross when he was crucified. This is why Jesus came into the world. This is the work of Christ, and this is the, uh, the focus of belief that counts, belief that reconciles us to the Father, brings us into the love of the Father, transfers us out from underneath the wrath of the Father, and brings us eternal life, is belief that trusts only in Jesus and his saving work on the cross. So have you embraced this part of the belief that counts, trusting only in Jesus to make you right with the Father, uh, to bring you forgiveness of sins, uh, to bring you the love of God and to give you eternal life with God in heaven and on the new earth? Have you embraced this part? Have you embraced that you are lost without Jesus, that you are trapped in your sin and on a road heading towards judgment without Jesus, but because he came to rescue us, now you have forgiveness and a place in God's family. If, if you've embraced uh, that, that truth, uh, that belief, that only by trusting in Jesus and his work on the cross, then you have the belief that counts. And what can we do to then offer that same belief to uh, the people that don't know Christ around us, I I would say that as we talk about Jesus, talk about Jesus to sinners from the stance of a sinner, uh, acknowledging that we need Jesus as much as anybody else, Uh, that if Jesus had not given us mercy, uh, we still would be lost. If Jesus wouldn't have given us forgiveness and a place in God's family, we still would have been separated from God and hopeless. Uh, As we present Jesus, present him and promote him humbly as a sinner to sinners, pointing to him as the only one to trust in, trusting in his saving work. Now the fourth movement in this presentation of Jesus's itinerary that teaches us about the belief that counts is this statement from Jesus that yes he came from the father he came into the world but now he says now I am leaving the world and going to the father you have believed that I am leaving the world and going to the father and why would Jesus now get to leave the world and go to the father because he accomplished his mission. Uh, In the morning, he was going to be arrested and crucified. Um, His job on earth was done, and Jesus was actually very excited this night about finally going back to the Father. His work on earth, his humiliation, his difficulty, his suffering was going to be completed 
uh, his, his mission was going to be finished and he got to go back to the Father. So this, this fourth part about this belief that counts has everything to do with Christ's successful mission on earth and Jesus' victory allowing him then to, uh, 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 to dust off his hands and head on back to the Father, mission accomplished. Jesus says this just in the next breath as he s- finishes encouraging his disciples, he switches over to praying to the Father. And he says, I have glorified you on the earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. Now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. Can you see that Jesus, go- leaving the world and going to the Father, this simple itinerary statement is packed full of excitement for Jesus and Jesus' followers. It means the Father has been glorified by the obedience of the Son. The work given to the Son by the Father to do has been successfully accomplished. Now Jesus was going to be exalted, vindicated, and returned to the glory that he had with the Father. This is very good news, Jesus' victory. When the Apostle Paul reflects back on it, he tells us that the Father raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand, his right hand in heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. Jesus leaving this world and going back to the Father was uh, the moment of amazing, powerful victory for Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And this is a, a central part of our belief that counts, not, that Jesus, not just his identity in eternity past or his work here on earth, but his victory. His successful accomplishing of salvation, his resurrection from the dead, his ascension into heaven, and his enthronement at the right hand of God the Father. This is the fourth blank on your outline and a fourth aspect of this belief that counts. Belief that counts boasts in Jesus' victory and Jesus' enthronement. This is what Jesus going to the Father was all about. His victory and his enthronement. As the name above every name, not just now, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. Jesus Christ, exaltation to the right hand of God, awaiting the day when his enemies are made a footstool under his feet, and he reclaims complete control of God's creation on behalf of the Father. Uh, this, is, this is our belief that we confess that results in salvation, uh, this confession of Jesus Christ's victory, if, that we confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, he is the master, he is the king of kings, and we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, vindicating and exalting him to his right hand. When we confess these things and believe these things, we are saved. This is belief that counts. Belief that counts boasts in Jesus' victory and Jesus's enthronement. Now is this the belief that you've embraced yourself? Embraced the successful saving work of Jesus? His literal resurrection from the dead? Ascension into heaven? His current reign in heaven at the right hand of the Father? And then his future return to reign upon this earth? Is this the belief that you've embraced? Uh, If you have, that's the belief that counts. And if we have embraced this part of the belief that counts, how can we then uh, present it to others and encourage others uh, to believe and boast in Jesus' victory and enthronement? I say, as we navigate this world, proudly associating with King Jesus, the King of Kings, uh, who is in charge now in heaven, but he's coming back soon to reconcile all things. So to be proudly associated with him, uh, not just in church or in Christian circles, but in every circle that we navigate, that people know that we are servants of the Lord Jesus Christ, who's in charge of us, and whether they know it or not, is in charge of them. And then expectantly, waiting for his return and making our decisions based on loyalty to him. Waiting as loyal servants, uh, loyal exiled servants 
of the heavenly king who is coming back soon. And if we proudly associate with him as we wait for his return and we live loyal, expecting his eminent, any minute uh, return, then people are going to see uh, that Jesus has had victory, Jesus is the king, and maybe that belief that counts uh, will, will just spread to them when they see our loyalty to the king. Going to switch to the flannel graph now. Just joking. Now, as uh, Jesus presents himself as the focus of the, uh, the belief of the disciples, uh, he tells them their belief in his identity, in his work, and in his victory has successfully resulted in the love of the Father. And they, they, they reply, yes, Lord, we do believe, but this is actually a very tense moment for the disciples because it, it, even though they've just expressed their true belief, their belief that counts, they're about to abandon Jesus. And, and he says, you know, you do believe, you believe now, but the bad news is you guys are gonna be scattered. Now, a moment's coming where you will be scattered, but... He encourages them that even though they're weak, they're frail, they're going to be scattered, their belief that counts, counts even in their weakness. Uh, this is the, really the weakest moment of the disciples is coming. And Jesus knows it's coming, he warns them that it's coming, but at the same time he says, your belief has brought you into the love of the Father. Your belief is sufficient, your belief counts, even in your weakness. This is, this is number five on your outline, that the belief that counts, this is really good news for us. Uh, it even counts in our weakness. And he says that you are going to leave me. You're all going to flee, but don't worry. Don't worry because there's someone who is not going to leave me. The Father is going to be with me. Uh, the father who declared at my baptism, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. He has never left me the whole time and he has never been disappointed with me the whole time. Uh, the father has pleasure in me and because the father has pleasure in me, even though everybody abandons me, he is going to be with me. He says you can, you can have peace in this world you will have tribulation, but I have overcome the world. Uh, I, this belief that counts uh, can still count in our weakness because it isn't belief that is based on our accomplishments. It's belief that's based on Christ's. Christ's pleasure of the Father, that he perfectly uh, fulfilled the will of the Father and perfectly pleased the Father 100%. And Christ's work on the cross, overcoming the world, defeating the world. He says, take courage. You, in this world, you will have tribulation, but I have overcome the world. Look at number six. Belief that counts, counts because it rests in Christ, not ourselves. This is why it counts even in our weakness, because we're trusting in Jesus Christ and his work and his work alone. We're standing behind Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, victorious and triumphant king. And because we stand behind him, uh, his victory is our victory. He sa says, I have overcome the world. Take courage, have peace. You are my people and I have defeated sin, I have defeated Satan, I have defeated death. And when we believe in Jesus Christ, John says, who is, it, the, who is the one who overcomes the world? It is the one who what? 
believes in Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus said, I have overcome the world. You can have peace and you have courage. And John says, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you overcome the world with Jesus. You become an overcomer. You, in Jesus, are freed from the power of sin. You don't have to fear uh, the penalty of sin in the future. You don't have to be enslaved to sin in the present. You, with Jesus, have overcome sin. You don't have to be afraid of Satan. He is a defeated foe. Uh, You don't have to fall for the tricks and temptations of the devil. Jesus Christ has overcome the world. He's overcome Satan. uh, And in union with him, we've overcome the world and Satan as well. Uh, Jesus overcame death itself, our greatest enemy, death. Uh, We don't have to be afraid of death as we are in union with Jesus Christ. uh, He raised from the dead and guarantees our resurrection from the dead as well. We don't have to fear death because when we enter into death, We know our sins are completely forgiven. Uh, We know we have nothing to fear. There is no condemnation for us. All we have to anticipate in death is the love and acceptance of the Father. Uh, Jesus Christ overcame the world, and that becomes the ground for our peace and for our courage uh, as we stand with him as overcomers as well. This is the result of the belief that counts. Belief that counts offers us peace, and belief that counts offers us courage. Because we're standing behind Jesus Christ, the King of kings, God in the flesh, victorious. This is our Lord. This is whom we've put our faith. And our faith will not fail us because we know whom we have believed. Jesus Christ King of kings. Let's pray to him. Jesus, we thank you for your love. Jesus, 